Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? And now you can see me. Yeah, now I can see you. Life is good. Hi, John. I go well, Nora. Do you hear me okay? Yes. Ah, okay, because I got a message my speaker wasn't my... Uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't at first. It wasn't. And you had us all muted. Ah, sorry about that. Karen's iPhone. Hey, Don! Welcome to the meeting! Ah, you're, huh, you're muted. Ah. Hi, you guys. Hey, welcome back. Oh Great my God, for a so You know, it's a new beginning, right? January. Huh? January? <laughs> This beats going out in the weather on January, doesn't it? It sure does. Except for the dog barking. Oh, well. I think mine just went back upstairs figuring I was out of chicken. But... <laughs> so, how is everyone? Good. Cold? Cold. Good. <laughs> That's good. Well, I think of it, have you gotten more people involved in uh, Susan B. Anthony neighborhood to make sure that you've got an alternate if you can't make it sometime? Um, no, we've been a little dormant, you know, since mm, COVID. And, know. Uh, we've had some new neighbors move in and we've done some preservation grant programs and things to connect us, but nothing in the normal format that we once had you know mm, so yeah you know, these new people don't know where you know what we how we met every month where we met every month uh, yeah so but um yeah we've had informal meetings in the park and uh, we've you know last year was kind of busy with the preservation program we did which mm -hmm. got us talking with each other and, and doing some stuff around the neighborhood you know around the yeah well, uh, I'm sorry. I hear it and I can feel it. Hey, so, oh, yeah. I need to get my son. So, um, you know, I'm kind of trying hard here at this time of year to revive things. So people are coming to meetings and inviting new people in so that uh, we can uh, pass the baton to another generation, you know. Uh, important. Louis Aponte, hey. One of the guys that started me down this road. Louis was involved with School 17 back when we jumped into the fray to get 16 going again, and uh, he and uh, Ralph Spezio came to a meeting and told us what. Uh, his neighborhood was doing around School 17, and we've been trying to apply those things to what we're doing. And the Southwest Common Council was a vehicle for doing mm -hmm. that, so we're trying to keep the, the council alive and make sure that it'll be there the next time we have uh, something that needs um, a little muscle to get things done. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How you doing, Louie? Trying to stand the right side of the dirt. That's all we could do, right? That's right. Hey, that's hard enough at our age, you know. Okay, who else? Oh, Bonnie. Bonnie with a Y. There she is. Gee, you're looking good there, Bonnie. You got a cup of coffee in your hands. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Hi, Liesl. How you doing? 
I'm good, John. How are you? Good, good. I'm glad you could make it, and uh, hopefully we can uh, make sure <laughs> that everybody's got a good feel for what we've been trying to accomplish and will help bring uh, new people to the fold to uh, keep this organization moving forward the way the the people in it at that time see fit but also I've been trying to concentrate on the education committee of this group so it'll be good to find some new faces to run the Southwest Common Council and it'll whatever it takes you know it may be several months but that's my goal anyways right now and the um, uh, Ms. L. Taylor is involved with all the community schools in the uh, in Rochester so she and I see each other frequently at all these various meetings we attend and uh, this is uh, you know one good place for her to get a, a sounding of what's going on out in the community and what groups she might need to connect with to do her job with the city school district. I know we've got uh, a few more people that will be joining us, but uh, why don't we... Eh, why don't we go start going around and we can uh, introduce ourselves and uh, say what group we're working with and what we'd like to get out of this interaction. My name's John Boutte. I chair the Southwest Common Council and the Education Committee of the Southwest Common Council. Work with the 19th Ward Schools Committee and Rochester uh, Coalition for Public Education and uh, Citizens Action uh, and AQE. So a lot of education situations. Um, John? John <coughs> Carn? John Carn with um, Reach Advocacy, which is involved with homeless shelters and affordable housing and Westside Farmers Market and Rapid Cemetery. Okay. Eleanor? Eleanor Coleman. I am um, with Catholic Family Center's Youth Build Program. And um, I'm the scribe for, I'm also with Rotary Southwest, and I'm the scribe for this group. Very good. Don. Hi, Don Noto from the Susan B. Anthony Neighborhood Association. And I'm glad to be back seeing everybody here tonight. It's yeah. Nice to see everybody. Face. Yes. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, we are delighted to have you back. Don, by the way, was uh, one of the original co-chairs for the Southwest Common Council Education Committee, and um, she she was the co-chair of this group at that time. So we have we go back a ways. <laughs> And I go back with Louie Aponte when we were co-chairs for, for Sector 3, ah, when, we were, hey. when the neighborhood wasn't even a part of the Southwest. So, yeah, many years. <laughs> yeah. Many years. We want to make sure that all that hard work keeps moving forward. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bob Thompson? Yeah, I'm Bob Thompson. I'm the, the guy from the other side of the river. I'm the chair of the Island Park Neighborhood Association and a member of MNBN, which is Many Neighbors Building Neighborhood. Welcome. Bonnie. Hi there. I'm Bonnie Mayer and uh, living in this country for this winter, unfortunately, rather than being in Thailand. So, but anyway, uh, I'm with uh, Cornhill Neighborhoods Association, and uh, we're kind of like everybody else, uh, trying to survive uh, without a lot of contact. And uh, but we still manage to do a few things, so that's uh, 
We're dead. Uh, let's see. Lee, you want to? Hi there. I'm Lee Loomis. I lead a tutoring team sponsored by the Rochester Engineering Society at Dr. Walter Kuwapur Academy, number 10 school. We have been out of a job for 24 months now. We're anxious to find a way to get back there and uh, get busy. Looks like it's going to have to be virtual for the foreseeable future. Um, but we need some guidance. Um, and it's been offered by the principal, Dr. Eva Thomas, uh, to help us get some training for our usually in-person tutors to uh, get comfortable with the virtual uh, online tutoring. Great. Louis? Hello, my name is Louis Aponte. Dawn, I miss you. I haven't seen you in years. Um, that is true. We are a former president of Sector 3 and current chair of CHNA, Charles House Neighbors in Action. And I'm a board member for Charles Settlement House um, since 2008. Um, very interested. I sit on a committee that helped run School 17 to make decisions as the first community school in the city of Rochester. Yeah, that's um, something you'll have to talk about. I'm sure uh, uh, Lizelle Taylor will um, be interested in that. Let's see, I've got Shaniqua. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, hello everyone. I'm Shaniqua Smith. I'm the Assistant Administrator at the Southwest Neighborhood Service Center. I'm filling in for John McMahon today. He had another engagement he had to attend. Uh, we deal with quality of life issues to sum it up. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Great. Thank you. Joe Baldino? Yes, I'm Joe Baldino, Principal School 29 in the Southwest, South Quadrant in the 19th Ward. <clears throat> was a teacher for a long time at Wilson for about 19 years, left, came back in 2016 as principal of School 29, and come to the meetings to. Uh, Stay on top of things. I can stay for about a half an hour, John, just so you know, okay? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, Lizelle? Hi, my name is Lizelle Taylor. I'm the director of community schools. It's nice to meet everyone, and thank you, John, for having me. I'm working with so many of our community schools, uh, you know, addressing needs and, and trying to make things happen to those schools and I appreciate the support of everyone. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Who else do we have? Karen? They are moving around on me, yes? Excuse me. He's on the phone. Yeah. yeah. Pardon me, somebody's trying to get in. Hey, Donna? Ha ha ha! I sent it an out enough times that people, I'm sure. Um, that's okay. Let me see if I can find it here. Do you want me to send the invitation yeah, to Donna Sarnacki to by email? Donna Sarnacki, that would be good, Eleanor. Okay. Eleanor's going to email it to you, okay? Thank you. Very good. <laughs> okay, take care. Wouldn't be right if Donna missed the meeting. Um, let's see. Well, Karen hasn't gone yet. Right. Uh, Karen Emerson, uh, current president of the 19th Ward Community Association. And like everybody else, we're trying to do the best we can at, at keeping things going um, during this time of COVID. Uh, I think our last... Uh, uh, time we met was uh, two years ago, uh, March. Yeah, good. And see, is there anybody else who hasn't gone yet? Bonnie, did you go? <laughs> yeah, okay. All righty, I think everyone's introduced themselves. Yeah, you want to go into Quadrant News? Yeah, I think that's, let's do that. I. Um, uh, I've been connecting with a lot of people, including 
people in the our new mayor's administration because there are a lot of things especially in the area of the schools work we've been doing that uh, we want to make sure that everything that we were doing with the previous administration gets content uh, at least not lost unintentionally uh, with the transition here so uh, Leanna Ruse is was going to be here but she had a, a conflicting uh, meeting and she's one of the people who is uh, going to be working with us when we need to get something done with the new administration and Koji where did she go Oh gee, where'd you go? Okay, there we go. Okay. I need somebody to run the, the buttons here. Um, multitasking isn't my forte at this point in my life. You you can share the uh, administrative thing so someone else can do that. Ah, okay. I'll have to. Uh, so you can make someone else co host and they can let people in and monitor it so you don't have to. How do I make somebody co host? You go to the participant list. Mm -hmm. And then the three little dots next to their name, you just click on that. And it will say make co host. Ah, okay. Let's see. Eleanor, you're already uh, busier than I can imagine. <laughs> um, you want to do that today, Karen? You know what? I just tried to do it. I'm on my iPhone. I'm not on my computer. Ah, okay. And it's not it's not working for me. Or I would yeah. I would be happy to do it. Um, you can try giving it to me, John. Yeah. Let me try it. Let I'll me... get the notifications when people come in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or that's the video pin. And John, the only reason I know that is because of the 19th Ward Community Association meetings where I tried to do both jobs and it's not possible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I it's the only, only reason I know it. It may be that with the version that I have that I don't have that. Um, I don't see. Well, don't worry about it this time. Okay, we'll, we'll um, have to work it out. Yeah. Something we... A to-do list. Okay. Um, we were talking about Quadrant News. So um, the one of the things that I want to make sure that we coordinate with uh, the mayor and with the school board is many of the groups that I'm involved with on education are reaching out to some of the newly elected assembly members and senate members to try to get ahead of steam up so that hopefully we can pass some of the legislation that is needed um, primarily they're primarily looking at the school issues now but this is a good time if there are other issues that we should be looking at to have you make it known and uh, work with us so we can uh, make sure we get maximum leverage as we try to get things done. We've tried in the past and haven't had any success, but it looks like uh, we've got a pretty pretty good um, cooperation between several of these groups, and uh, we've had meetings with uh, two assembly members and a senator so far, and uh, we're, we've got another one scheduled for a little later this month, I think. So that's one of the things that... Hmm. Nobody there. 
So that's one of the, one of the things that I would like to make sure we uh, think about, and uh, I'll um, if there is there something that you know of that um, we should uh, put on the table as uh, an issue that we should be doing some lobbying about. Um, I kind of have an issue I think I, is occurring that maybe we don't know or talk about is how many kids didn't go back to school? I think I have neighbors that are afraid to send their kids back because I haven't seen buses and I know there's three kids down there all different ages and there was always at least two buses and they're still down there. And so, and I know it's homeschooling now, but even when it was back to school, so I'm just curious as, do we know that information in the South Wedge or Southwest that you know, our kids in your neighbor, are they all back to school? Um, Lizelle, uh, do you have a um, good feel for what schools are back in person? And this is over in the Corn Hill area you're talking about, Don. Yeah, I, I could just tell you that in the morning, because uh, I get out and walk the dog, I, I would say that there's 10 buses that come across the street to the uh, uh, Rochester Housing Authority uh, location because none of them go to the school that's in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So they are bussed mm -hmm. everywhere, and there is a lot of buses. And then this, uh, in the afternoon, there's another a bunch of buses and they're someplace between 2.30 and about 4, which, uh, you know, a little, you know, it slows up the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But um, w while, I, while I just had the floor, I just want to say that uh, at, at Corn Hill is going to be writing a very, very wonderful letter to the city and particularly to the uh, D DES because this is the first time that any of us can remember that we have had a snowplow down our side streets in at least the last 10 years. And with all this snow, we were all prepared to go out and shovel the street because that's what we've done for years. And I, we could not believe it. Normal, really big snow plows, not just rent up plow or whatever, really cleaned up the snow in Corn Hill so that everything was quite passable. I, I really, it, it was just absolutely amazing. So I, that's just my, my positive thing to the, to the, to the city. I'm glad you brought that up. That is so true. Yeah. I went out the day after all this, and it was so clear all over. Yeah, I, I was referring to uh, Corn Hill when I was talking to Donna there, but she's a uh, Susan B. Anthony neighborhood, so it, that's where you were seeing mm -hmm. kids not catching the bus? Yeah, I'm not sure if they're um, back in school, and I would heard that there was a concern of the mom. Um, of them about COVID, yeah. COVID concern. Yeah, yeah, I just wonder how many are all the kids accounted for and back in school. I I think there's, you know, attendance varies at different schools for uh, different reasons. Right. Of course, depending on what school uh, you're in, transportation is still an issue for some 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 people. You know, um, I know had some struggles with their transportation. Number nine school had some struggles with their transportation, depending on the school. And of course, for obvious reasons with COVID, um, you know, the, the range is so, so wide, you know, whether it's, you know, unvaccinated, whether it's, you know, too young to get the vaccine. It's just a, a variety of reasons. Attendance is sort of ebbing and flowing at schools, but we're starting to get a lot more students back in school full time since we're, we're back to all schools being open as of Tuesday. Okay. But the attendance is still an issue, yes. Yeah. But it's better than it has been. So I, I don't know if that's a good thing, good answer or not. Well, that's something we can share with them to maybe encourage them to, you know, if people aren't sending their kids that, you know, when we talk with our neighbors to spread the word that more people are going back to school. Yeah, so. check with them and see if um, they're vaccinated, whether their kids are vaccinated. It depends a lot on each family as to right. what risk they can take, you know. Right. Right. But, you know, you know, there's a song, you know, we're not where we used to be. We're not where we ought to be, but we're not where we used to be either. Mm-hmm. 
Stau. Yeah, and that's a good reason for us to seize the day because right now things are so screwed up <laughs> with the uh, the impact of uh, COVID that we really that there are a lot of things that just are not going to go back to the way they were, and we'd want to make sure they go back to something that's as good as we can make it. So this is a time for action as much as I'd like to crawl back into bed many mornings, and sometimes I do, but... Um, okay. Uh, is there any news on uh, Corn Hill? Uh, not Corn Hill, Bulls Head. Uh, that's something that is going to be impacting the uh, 19th Ward and uh, Neighborhoods United area in particular because that's where it is. And also uh, uh, Cots area of the city. Anything new, Shaniqua? Sorry, I was trying to press the unmute button. Um, give me a second here. We do have some updates for you guys. Um, the update on the Bulls Head Project, and this is from Rick Rinsky, um, is that the environmental um, due diligence is a cleanup and is moving ahead on various brownfield sites. Um, in particular, DES will be advancing a cleanup project at 24 and 32 York Street um, this year. Um, also, we expect the selected developer team to prepare and present a preliminary proposed development plan this summer for public review comments. Um, they are continuing their due diligence with existing data analysts towards a proposal. Um, and that was from, you know, Rick Rinsky on the Bulls Head project. Um, as far as the update for the Southwest Neighborhood Service Center, uh, we recently distributed over 5,000 rapid test kits to the barbershops, salons, and also places of worship. And we are waiting for dates, you know, for further um, distribution. The next time um, we will be um, issuing it for individuals to register online and pick up four kits per household. Um, because during the process when we were issuing it to the shops and the salons, we had a lot of people come in, you know, trying to get kits for themselves and their households. So being that we saw that that was a demand, you know, we offered to use our location for them to be able to come in and pick up those kits. Uh, we will let you know as soon as that data is available. We're waiting to hear back for when the next shipment is going to come in. Um, as far as the service center itself goes, we're currently interviewing applicants for our two vacant clerical positions. Um, so we got some interviews set up to so we can get back to being full staff. Um, we're also preparing a proposal and securing funds for the AmeriCorp, AmeriCorp intern to serve as a neighborhood associate ambassador. So they can kind of help, you know, task with finding ways to bolster attendance for existing groups and also assist with establishing new block, new block clubs in an inclusive manner. Um, for the most part, let me see if we have anything else um, going on. Okay, so the first round of community meetings to review draft zoning maps and use tables with Southwest, except for downtown Wilson Magnet High School Auditorium, um, which is at the five, I'm sorry, 501 Genesee Street will be Thursday, February 10th. That's gonna be the first round of community meetings. Um, if anybody need that link, I can put it in the chat. If anyone's interested, I'll drop it there. Yeah, please do. Yes, yeah. please do. Absolutely. Because that's something that Eleanor can make use of when she's pulling things together for the uh, minutes. Not a problem. And I still uh, don't see Donna uh, coming in. Uh, did you send her the note, Eleanor? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> huh? What was that? All right, I just sent it again. Okay, I see there's one person in the mail. Ah, there she is. Okay, there's something I don't understand yet about this system. There's Donna. We were just looking for you, Donna. Um, yeah, I know. I'm just going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Donna. Hello. 
Okay, I'll be quiet. Let's run a meeting here. <laughs> you can introduce yourself while... Oh, um, I am Donna Sarnacki, the person who seems to can't... I know there were all these emails and stuff like that. Um, I am uh, uh, District 10 for the 19th Ward Community Association, and I also sometimes come to this meeting if I can get on. Anyway, I live on Post Avenue. That's that's it. That's Great. me. <laughs> and she attends a lot of meetings, don't you? I know. Well, she's obviously, a good citizen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I. Uh, we also had Stella Wang, which we hoped would join us, but I heard from at another meeting earlier today that she's up to her ears in uh, making all of her, putting all of her courses on online so that more people can get involved with it. She's the, she does a lot of work from the um, University of Rochester doing outreach projects into the community. So um, she sends, you know, some of her students get particular assignments to go do something. Hopefully we can get one of them into this group sometime. But anyway, she's busy right now with all that reorganization. Um, let's see. Anything else from um, New Quadrant News or Bull's Head or anything else that somebody wants to talk on? Um, well, it's kind of in the um, Bull's Head neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. This is house just recently announced development on Jefferson Ave and Brown Street. Mm -hmm. um, he has given them properties on Jefferson Ave, um, some for parking and then some for development of a, a bigger um, visitor center and place to archive their historic artifacts, something that's museum durable, um, where they're at right now isn't, so they really need to move on that. So they're moving ahead with the site down there um you know where the sculpture is there'll have to be some reworking of the road down there it, it's silver and brown and jefferson so they, okay. they'll do some earth studies first they're going to try to buy the tire shop and bikes the, the guy that sold the bikes and stuff down there they're mm. buying that along with the city property so. good did you have something you wanted to say john yeah also in the bull's head area is 720 west main street the rectory building next, next to Saints Peter and Paul Coptic uh, Orthodox Church. Sundering West Main is going to be opening soon as a wintertime shelter for the homeless, and it will be um, uh, serving about 14 persons starting as early as next week. And um, meals will be brought in from uh, St. Peter's Kitchen. Persons will have the individual rooms there. So for each individual, one room. Uh, and then with the ability to have uh, laundry and, and uh, food taken care of, and they'll be starting very soon. Also on Willowbank Street, not too far from uh, West Main and St. Peter and Paul's, is another homeless shelter that is also supported by Reach Advocacy that has 10 persons that's, that are currently being served. Where's this? Uh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, well, Where's Willow, Willow Bank? Where is that? Uh, num num number two, Willow Bank is off West Main Street near St. Peter and Paul Rectory. Oh. And that'll be another 10 people? Yes. Uh, this year, Reach has to do a scattered site approach. Formerly, we could, we could have one building prior to COVID, but now with uh, the one person per room restriction, we now have we'll be having at least four separate sites with sites which makes things very complicated but uh much more needed good let's see len Tory has joined us yes i'm sorry i'm doing double duty today yeah i know how that is yeah taking two tutorings and picking up from activities and it's cold out there oh, God, yes. but I, I i was moving to get here john thank good you. good thank you very much um we i was hoping we'd have um stella wang join us because um well i sent a note to you and to her 
uh, but uh, apparently she's busy with uh, re revamping some of the courses she's doing for online. Who was that? I'm sorry, John. I didn't hear. That, that was uh, Stella Wang that we talked a oh, little bit about Stella, at the last meeting. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I don't know if she'll join us yet. We just had Je Janiel Crocker, is it? Yes, it's Janiel. How are you? Okay. Welcome. Uh, Thank you. If. Uh, you and Lantori could introduce yourselves as to what groups you're working with. Go ahead, look, Janelle, since you're talking now. Oh, sure, yes. Um, I'm Janelle Crocker, and I work at Connected Communities. We're a place-based, um, a place-based um, nonprofit that works in the Beachwood and Emma neighborhoods. Um, some of you may or may not have heard of us. We've done um, a lot of work in our education pillar in terms of <clears throat> providing the site coordination position at School 33 and developing the community school um, work there um, and also partnership with East and just working on the, the neighborhood education goals. Um, that's a part of our work. So I'm just here um, sitting in and thank you for having me. Thank you very much for coming. And Tori, do you want to fill us in a sure. little bit on things you're involved in? Yes. Well, uh, first and foremost, I uh, continue to be a member of United Christian Leadership Ministry. Um, I'm also, at this present time, working for Generational Engagement Matters, which is merely a continuation under that name for the essay promotions of regarding gun violence in the community that was started last year. And like I've shared with everyone, I'm looking to increase uh, out to the schools that we want to connect and uh, be able to have them participate with those essays and um, pretty much um, make it more successful than we even found it last year. And I'm not minimizing last year at all because in spite of the COVID, we had uh, over 60 participants. We were able to give out significant uh, cash prizes. The highest price was, uh, cash price was $300 to three of the winning students. And uh, the rest of them were um, respectfully uh, 200 to $150 each for the third prize. So to me, um, there's a great value in it because it's an opportunity to do something that oftentimes doesn't happen enough, and that is to give a platform to the young people to be able to help them elevate their message and to really let some of the older ones like myself, and I count myself um, as in an older generation, but I thank God for it, that these babies really do have concerns and they really do have something to say. And many of them were able to do that through those essays and um, it was really touching to me. There was times when I read it and I had to stop. The other thing too, I'm continuing trying to find a way to get Legacy uh, Park moving. So uh, I guess I'm into a lot of things, but I count it all to be a blessing and all of it to be worthwhile to the community. Great, thank you very much. You do a lot and uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get Stella together with you because I think there may be a good uh, fit there to, to put more. Oh, she all, always with Stella. Matter of fact, um, Stella has already um, contributed to the essays and I greatly appreciate it. I don't know if she wanted me to share that, but um, yeah. So we, you know, like I explained, um, we definitely want and need donations um, and we want the community to uh, wrap around this project also and prayfully continue it. It's not a one and done, that it should be a continuum uh, for the children within this community. Great. See, Courtney, did you get a chance to introduce yourself? I'm trying to uh, make sure I include everyone. Courtney? Courtney Thomas. No. Well, we'll come back.
Koji has joined us, and I know she hasn't introduced herself yet. Okay. Koji? It's okay. I'm just going to listen. Nothing important about me. Okay, ju be. just tell us, you know, for the people who don't know here, who, who you are, what you're involved with, so they have a feel. Well, I am a retired school teacher, and I'm involved with doing volunteer work. That's it. Okay, very good. Thank you. And... See, Courtney, are you are you there right now? I sure am. Huh. Okay, your uh, proxy for Malik Evans you've got written there. Yes, indeed. Uh, good to be here. My name is Courtney Thomas. I am the right-hand man and executive staff assistant to Mayor Malik Evans, and I just wanted to, I also live in, in the neighborhood, so I'm here with my fee hat on, representing the mayor's office, just listening in, but also as a neighbor and as a resident um, of Kenwood Avenue. Great. Nice. Yeah, we've got uh, a lot of connections we need to make sure we make with uh, Malik Evans relative to some of the things we've been working on for the schools. So, um, you know, I don't want to turn this into a schools committee meeting, although I, I have a great tendency to do that. But uh, anyways, you and I should uh, review that certainly next, next week, I think it is, the uh, schools committee meeting. I hope you can join us there and um, we'll get into a little more depth on what, what we've done that we want to make sure it gets uh, transferred from the last administration to this one and to explore new things also. So, delighted you're here. Yeah, absolutely. And happy to be here. Definitely will continue to try to make it as much as I can. And, and yes, John, as we met before, you can always reach out to me on my cell phone and we can definitely get together. I do want to give you a heads up and to the whole group that we will be having a neighborhood associations roundtable on the 31st of January at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, that email was just sent out today by our Neighborhood Silver Center's okay. director and they sent it to all of the neighborhood association presidents. Uh, there's a form in there that essentially asks two questions. One, what are you really excited about for your neighborhood and your neighborhood association? And also, what would your neighborhood and a neighborhood association need to thrive? Um, if you could narrow that down into one thing, pretty hard question. All in all, I just wanted to put that on your radar to look out for that email. Uh, we will be having that round table with the presidents. And as promised before, years ago, when uh, the mayor was a council member, a listening tour, taking those 200,000 steps for the 200,000 residents of Rochester, that is something that we have not forgotten. Uh, so please keep that in the back of your mind. But it starts with a roundtable with the presidents. Great. Hey, Courtney, if you if you have a chance, give that link a click. I wasn't able to, uh, to get into that form this evening when I tried it. I sure will. Yeah, you can put anything you'd like in the uh, in the chat and. Um, I have a I have a question, um, John. Yes, Lintori. Uh, for Courtney. Courtney, uh, hi. This is Lintori Johnson. Um, and I don't know if you remember when you came to Street Voices with the mayor and we spoke. Uh, I sure do. Good. Well, here's a question I have. I know that, and I really like the fact that it, the, the mayor has been uh, already connecting in a lot of important ways, especially like with the young people in the community. And I don't know how many people are aware of that, but I know he's really made a good effort at connecting with the young people here in Rochester. And I'm hearing about the community uh, leaders for the Rex, I think you said. 
Is it for the recs? For the neighborhood service centers. Rec service centers. Okay, here's the question I have. Do you know or are you aware of the fact if um, our new mayor is planning on doing an outreach to some of the activist groups within the community? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we are absolutely planning to touch bases with a, a lot of our different active groups. In fact, a lot of activist groups have already started to reach out to us to schedule kind of just one-on-ones to do kind of greetings. And from those received emails, we essentially have been just taking stock and trying to put together these round tables, bringing everybody to the table at one time to have you know, a common conversation and to leave with common action items. Uh, and that's really how we will continue to do things. The biggest reason why we have not directly been meeting with uh, activist groups just yet is because we're really focused on implementing the race report and we're touching bases with the county to get our ducks in a row internally with the county on the race report and how we really have to look at it. And then we're going to open that up to a community conversation and really start touching bases with these activist groups to say, hey, what in the RAISE report do you really want us to focus on? And here's some of the things we thought about on a, you know, some of the suggestions that were made, some of the recommendations on how community-based organizations get involved, so forth and so forth. And we want to start that conversation with community groups before actually making specific and official recommendations and official recommendations on how to get involved. So we will absolutely be reaching out to these community groups very shortly. I love hearing that because personally, I think that that's what's going to take an all-inclusive effort. And um, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that because I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm just tired of the silo effects that happen in the maneuvering. And I know that that has become a barrier in a lot of things that need to happen within our community. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. It. And we are looking forward to having a conversation and please keep us accountable. This is the motif that we hope to carry on and we will carry on to breathe some new life into the way our city operates. And to be honest, the mayor has one rule about every meeting. You have to check your ego at the door. We're here to do common work and stay on the same page. So no matter where you're from or where you have been you're here in the, the present moment to have a conversation about our city. So we'll continue just to be on the ground level and include people and bring them to the table. Great. Delighted to hear that. Um, the um, Rochester uh, Coalition for Public Education has been looking at a lot of the uh, items in the report and trying to do a lot more awareness of what the black and brown community has gone through and things that need to be done in terms of anti-racist uh, efforts in the, in the area so they uh, I don't know if they've gotten in touch with you yet. I know they had been working with the previous group that was working on that, but I'm sure they'll be interested in connecting with you. Okay. Um, see, the co-chair election issues I'll just touch on. I think most of you have heard this from me. Um, I'm two years overdue for being retired as co-chair of the Southwest Common Council and in fact I've been without a co-chair for close to a couple of years now. So I'm hoping that as things um, get uh, pumped up in terms of this group that we'll find some hearty young souls to uh, get involved with uh, co-chairing this group. We've usually had uh, co-chairs. The uh, It's a two-year stint and you can get re-elected so it's it's a four-year uh, if you go for a re-election but um, it takes a little while to know who's doing what so you know usually we're looking for people to 
be with the group uh, and get familiar with what what's going on before we we pass the baton but I I would love to pass the baton and make sure that we have somebody to continue all this work um, so anyways if you're interested in uh, or you know somebody who would like to get involved with this sort of thing um, refer them to this group and uh, we'll hopefully have people get familiar with one another and so that they know who they're putting in charge so uh, I've been eyeing Bonnie for a while because she's been she's been with this group for so many years she's got all the expertise in the world but she usually runs to the sunnier climbs in the winter uh, not not that, that's that's part of the reason but the other real reason is the fact that uh, I really would like to see uh, some Cornhill is kind of like over here on the fringe and we have our own thing and we're a little bit different but I, I, I'm really concerned about our neighbors in the in the cots and change of scenes at Plex and I would really like to see some leadership come from there I think mm -hmm. would be much more representative of uh, the community than, than uh, those of us who live over here uh, some people still feel that the 1974 gentrification puts us in a bad spot to begin with and let's be serious we don't have as uh, a strong and integrated neighborhood we are uh, probably uh, a quarter of our neighborhood is, uh, is African American Asian and uh, Spanish, but I just don't think that we represent uh, this particular area. We're, I'm going to come every time and be there and support. I'm going to try to do some stuff with uh, John over at the, at the Neighborhood Center, but I, I just really, do I have the time and the energy and the skills? Yes, but that doesn't mean that I should take the job. Okay. And I re really would like to see uh, so, somebody from much more of the communities that are, are struggling. Um, I think it's it's pretty well known that uh, you know we run a big festival every year. We've got a very good investment thing, and I don't think that there's another community that has eight hundred thousand dollars in the bank. So, mm -hmm. I'm in. you got that right. Um, yeah, well, I you are one of the wonderful people we've had with us for many years, and um, I'm sure that whoever <coughs> steps in will be able to draw on your expertise and I'll do what I can. Happy to support. Happy yeah. to support. And we we had a uh, few people from um, Swan join us last time but they uh, don't he seem to be here this this time. I know there were three folks I sent notices out to. And uh, We'll have to uh, try to make a, a call. Do you keep a list of who from uh, COTS came to one of these meetings? A few, it was several months ago now, Eleanor. We're gonna have to um, try to, uh, I wish I had a good database <laughs> that, that I'm familiar with to keep track of everyone but uh, go back through the minutes yeah have to do that um i spend half i'd like to say i'd like to say to bonnie bonnie thank you um i, I love what you had to say that's refreshing because um i was a child who lived in the cornhill area so i'm very familiar with the history and a lot of things that occurred there before the gentrification of it. So just your perspective on it says volumes to me. So I just want to let you know, I take great recognition with what you had to say because you don't hear that often. But thank you so much for saying what you did. It was powerful. Thank you, thank you for saying that. We've, we've been really trying to support the young people who are trying to do a great deal to uh, do the history of uh, uh, Clarissa Street and so forth and so on. We've been tried every year. We supported the Clarissa Street reunion, etc. But it's a it's a lot different. And for some of us who did get uh, loans 
is uh, this house was condemned and uh, on the wrecking block in, uh, in 1974. And those of us that got loans, believe me, did not realize that we were uh, an exclusive group getting the loans and uh, it wasn't open to the general community in terms of uh, redlining and mortgages and so forth and so on. So there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of bad history there and it's yeah, not yeah. something we can do anything about. Thank you. Anyway. Great. Yeah, you. Um, I work with um, what was formerly school number three um, over in Cornhill, and uh, the new name escapes me right now, but um, they've received a lot of support from Cornhill recently. Uh, for quite a while, we were trying to get the school administration to connect with the Corn Hill organization and it sounds like that has finally happened and um, they're very appreciative of the support that you folks have given them so we're trying to make progress but it's, it's like herding cats sometimes um, let's see who um, so anyways for co-chair thing um, let us know if you know somebody who would be a a good pick for that and get them involved um, you're always welcome to bring s somebody new who who um, is interested in getting involved with the community that's one of the reasons I've I've um, reached out to the um, the schools to invite them either to join us at this meeting or to bring some parents who they know are involved in things in their neighborhoods because from the way I see it the schools are really our future we either turn th things around and have effective schools or we're going to be in a real mess in Rochester and um, so it's it's imperative the uh, neighborhoods protect and f foster and bring the schools along and it's equally important for the schools to try to increase the cohesiveness of the neighborhood which is one reason we've been pushing for community schools that predominate in local students um, to allow that um, the schools to really build up some uh, cohesiveness with the neighbor within the neighborhood. So, new business. Is there any new business? Although we've been talking on and off into that area. Any new business somebody would like to bring up? No. Uh, I'll just like. Yeah. I'll put the spotlight on Canal Street. Um, there's a lot of go uh, redevelopment going on in the buildings that sat vacant. Nine Canal Street is now a multi-use commercial space with a barber shop, a gym, a jeweler, a photographer studio, a vintage clothes, all kinds of uh, little suites that uh, small businesses and artisans can rent to sell their wares. Um, so stay tuned to 9 Canal Street and then the same person just bought the building next to it which is 53 Canal Street it's a three-story building and he's looking to get the trades programs in there mm. um, really uh, focus with both these he's had some meetings of maybe getting like the woodworking students in there or electricians in there so he's a very smart young entrepreneur, commercial developer with good investors and, and a smart vision plan for Canal Street. And then East House is also moving on the VOA building. They just got their pilot agreement through the city for their taxes, so that's a good step, meaning that more money is on the way from the state. They need some more grant money from the state home money and um, to finish off their financing, but they've already gotten a good $10 million start on the project there, so Canal Street's going to be a, a hopping place in, a, in about a year. 
<laughs> Hopefully sooner. Great. Great. It's nice to hear that things are coming together like that in, uh, in your area. And, uh, <laughs> yes, we... <laughs> What what's his name or? Uh, Manny Manny agrees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, see, John, did you have you've been silent there? Do you have something that you'd like to bring up for, as far as project reports? John mm -hmm. Karn. Oh. Um, um, the um, Rapid Cemetery Project, uh, obviously uh, on hold now with the winter season. Uh, Westside Farmers Market presumably be getting started in the springtime again. Uh, St. Monica's is having a coach giveaway this Sunday from 1 until 3 at 830 Genesee Street. A coat giveaway in a drive through type of fashion, but other clothing items as well at no cost uh, the giveaway. Okay. Uh, John, yeah. I'd yeah. like to um, extend an invitation, like as I was mentioning earlier. We're doing um, the second year. We're attempting to get a second year essay um, contest going for the children here in the city school district. So I'd like to extend an invitation. I will send you the link uh, mm -hmm. so you can make it inclusive to your minutes okay. to invite um, people who might be at the table who might be interested in participating either through sponsorship, donations, but the idea of it is is to engage and try to make this move forward and become an annual activity um, for the children in this community. So I'll make sure I get the link out. And um, I really would appreciate anyone and everyone who'd like to um, be a part of this effort. Yeah, if you'd put it in the chat, that way we'll have have it in writing, and it makes it makes it easier. I have to send it through Melanie. Okay. Uh, Melanie will have to send it out to you. Okay. And if you would be kind enough to include it to any of your sure. minutes um, or notes, uh, we would appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, send it to uh, me and to Eleanor because Eleanor is the keeper, we'll of the scribe for this group, and. I know. <laughs> I keeps know. this group alive, really. Okay. John, and I'll take whatever is in the minutes and put it in the bulletin for my department to go out to community schools, okay? That's great. That's great. We'll really great. appreciate that. Thank you. Any, okay. Anything that I'll we send should, the flyer along with anything that. Anything we should yeah. do Perfect. to uh, Thank you. work with you, we'd love to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Um, anything? Uh, anything else that uh, someone wants to bring up? Um, uh, the are you raising? Oh, okay. Um, as far as the schools committee, the education committee, we're very busy right now. I sit on five uh, community engagement teams for the schools in the southwest there's uh, at least a couple that I should be more involved with than I, I am but there's there's a limit to uh, how many you can get involved with the city school district is a big place even just the, the southwest quadrant um, but it it's moving along i'm i'm encouraged every time i sit in on one of these community engagement teams the amount of energy that you see the principals and vice principal teachers community outreach folks it's um uh, there's a lot of effort going on and uh, we're trying to do what we can to to help that so I invite you to come to our uh, Southwest Common Council Education Committee, which is next next uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, and uh, I'll send out the link to everybody for that. Uh, I usually try to. Yes, John. I just like to mention that the 
uh, Jefferson Avenue Seventh Day Adventist Church could really benefit from community support, especially financial support, as they need to rebuild their church. They do phenomenal work in terms of health fairs, food distribution, clothing distribution, and they are strong assets to our Southwest Quadrant, but they need help. Is there any chance they'll be able to rebuild that church, or is it too far gone? I, I ride past it frequently. The front facade appears intact, but the sanctuary is, is, is gone. The roof is gone, but they definitely want to, to rebuild there. Um, we've been able to help at St. Monica to do some storage of some materials for them, but the help that they need is, is just letting them know that their work in the past and the future is appreciated. Okay. Good. We should. Uh, do you have uh, some names to reach out to there? Um, Pastor Hanson Drysdale is the seventh, it's Jefferson Avenue Seventh day Adventist pastor there. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, contact info, if you want to put it in the chat, that would be helpful. Or do you uh, have that, uh, Eleanor? Best bet is just to simply Google uh, Jefferson Avenue Seventh Day Adventist. Okay. There's a number of news accounts there, plus connections for GoFundMe opportunities. Okay, good. I'll Thank put you. that in the minutes. Very good. The Thank link. You. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, well, we're six minutes past uh, the hour. Um, is there anything else that we should touch on that somebody here knows about? No? Well, um, I'm delighted to see you back with us, Don. And, uh, and uh, for you and anybody else who is involved from various parts of the community, be sure to try to bring new people to the table because uh, while I, it's nice to see you in big boxes here I'd like I'd rather squint <laughs> and have twice as many people at the table so that we we're, we're sure that this com this group will thrive and continue on so if there's anybody who's really active who would be a, a good person to add to this group and to bring things to the table uh, please um, bring them and uh, I hope that some of you will join us at the meeting next Wednesday for the schools Southwest Common Council Schools Committee and uh, if there's nothing else uh, I'll uh, We'll call it a wrap, is that? Okay, I just want to make sure people uh, noted in the chat that the 19th Ward does a mini clean sweep every month on the second Saturday of the month. And they're going to focus on Bull's Head in February 12. 10. Is it 10 to 12? 10 to noon. Oh, it's February. Next one is February 12th, 10 to noon. Okay. <laughs> Has uh, everybody uh, captured what they would like to? We'll try to put things in the chat in the minutes, but uh, I often get so busy I forget to save the chat. But uh, no, I've got the stuff from the chat. Okay, good. All righty. Well, thank you very much for. Thanks, guys. Did you have thank something you for coming. You to say, Lee? Did you have something you wanted to say? No, I was just reaching for a button. Ah, okay. <laughs> I know how that goes. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nice having you join us. Hope we'll see you again. Thank you.